Hello, my name is Gaurav and in this video, we'll cover about the basics of cloud. Recently, I have cleared AI 900. So I started a series where I was explaining all about this AI 900 and what is there in AI, right? So I want to start some practical things on that, that how you can do machine learning and all the algorithms over there. But before that, I thought of why not to explain the basics of cloud. This uh, mind map I created long time back. So I thought of using it and sharing it with others before I shared my next video where I'll tell you how you can create an Azure account. And we'll do some practical things which are explained in, in this AI 900. So let's begin. So this is the playlist that I have added on my channel with the name Cloud and AI. You can subscribe to my channel if you want to book a session with me. You can just uh, click on this. And please do support that if you are liking the content, let's begin. So let's begin with what is a cloud. So cloud has this that uh, it you it, you get the on-demand availability of computer system resources, right? So you might be using OneDrive or Google Drive, right? Or you might be watching videos on Prime, Netflix, right? All of that, all of that runs on cloud, okay? So, uh, it's like you get the storage or the computing power, right? Storage is the example of OneDrive and Google Drive where you get the storage and you can even get some virtual computer, right? Like you can get a VM where you can use it. So if you notice, there are majorly three, three things written, application, platform, and infrastructure. We'll read that about in detail, but the main concept of cloud is like on-demand availability of computer system resources, right? If you want to take an example, right? You can take the example of Oyo. Oyo has a hotel of chains, right? If you want to stay over there, you go and you book, right? Or any other hotel chain, right? You go there and Airbnb is another example, which is of different type, like which will fall under one of these category if we uh, directly compare, but you just give the rent for some time, you use their service and you come back, right? Similarly with Ola Uber, you hire a taxi, you use it for some time, you are not responsible for how the cars are maintained, whether the, the pollution is checked or not, whether these hotels are following certain policies or not, you are not concerned about it, right? You are just using it for uh, some, some time, right? There is just like Zoom car. Right, you are not responsible for all the like buying that car, taking care of that car. You book that car, you get it, you use it, and you return it. Right. So similarly, when we talk in the terms of computer, it is majorly the storage and computing power. But there is a lot of it uh, that is there that you can hire for some time, and you can pay it as you are using it. Okay. Let's see it further. So what are the expenses? Like why you will do a higher, right? So uh, when you don't do a higher, you have a capex. Basically, you have to do some upfront cost, right? Low, so let's say you want to run a hotel, you will have to construct that hotel. Or if you want to, instead of Zoom, you want to use your own car. So you will buy your own car, right? So there is a upfront cost, right? Maybe you need that car, maybe for let's say 20 days, right? Uh, let's say you're traveling to somewhere, right? So there is a up, upfront cost as well. You might have to pay, let's say 20 lakhs and the car cost will reduce over time, right? So there is a capex involved uh, when you own that asset, right? Whereas in case of cloud, generally we use, there is another term called as OPEX, right? Operational cost. So here you pay based on consumption, okay? So if you are using 20 GB on cloud, you will pay only for that, okay? Like for example, generally when you buy a hard disk, you want to be future proof and you, you may buy a hard disk which is having three TB, right? But for example, let's say uh, this year you have some marriage in your home and you want to store some data, maybe temporarily for your friend or something. Then for one year you get, you can hire a, a cloud storage, right? Then you can save on this capex cost, right? So you pay based on consumption. If this year you want to use this much GB of data or less, so cloud works on this model. So you can save a lot of cost when you go via the cloud route, right? Another example I can give is that big billion day sale, right? Let's say you are running a website. Okay, on a particular day, there is a lot of traffic, right? Generally, let's say the traffic is like, like this on a graph, but on a particular day, the traffic goes 
like a lot of traffic comes on your website right so you have to be ready for that day right amazon cannot say that okay our site will be down for 4 hours or maybe even for 4 minutes right they will lose a lot of things so in those cases how cloud can help that is that on for that particular day maybe you can buy 100 servers or rent i would say rent 100 servers for that day pay only for one day okay you need not to pay for 365 days right in case of your hard drive like you pay it up front right but let's say only for one day you need 3 tb only for one trip you want to store those many photographs you are going on a trip and you know that lot of photographs and maybe after coming back you realize i don't need all of it you will delete and there is only just 1 tb right so why to pay for 3 tb so that flexibility we get it in the cloud and that comes under opex basically operational expenses and this is capital expenses so cloud works mostly on this model called as opex model okay as i already explained you that in like in azure cloud also there is a model called as pay as you go so as much as you use you pay for it so let's say you have taken a computer like say we call it vm virtual machine and you use it for one day you pay for it you can delete that okay you don't want it delete that so you need not to pay for it so you pay for the resources that you use and the computing time now let's move some of the other things that how the cloud service models work on so it works on based on the responsibility so what do i mean by that is that one is the provider and one is the tenant right so for example i am the tenant and google is the provider or microsoft is the provider or amazon is the provider okay so what they are providing let's say they are providing me some storage right cloud storage so what part i am maintaining it and what part they are maintaining it so based on that the cloud service models are different so we'll see in the in this next uh, portion so these are the three major models right but there are more also called as das data as a service or uh, there is there is one more function as a service right so all of these terms uh, keep on they keep on increasing as as more and more flexibility gets added into the cloud okay let's uh, check them one by one so software as a service as i told you that uh, that based on what you are managing uh this is the particular model so software as a service the example is this microsoft 365 right you on browser you type uh, office.com right and you can use it right so in this case most of the cases it's like you have your software and it is being provided by a cloud provider and users are like for example let's say there is a third party they have an application which is running on cloud right and users are using it and they are not worried about how we'll install and what we'll do that the third party uh, like basically the cloud provider can do that stuff for you so that is called as software as a service okay and user pay for the software they use so this users are paying for the software as they use like for example netflix also or amazon prime also so all of this for us we are using those things as software as a service and the companies have installed it on the uh, cloud okay give data to the application managed by cloud provider so cloud provider takes care of things right so let's say you have created a software route right now you, now you want all of your user to use on azure cloud and all so you give to them they install it and they take care of everything right so host is responsible for what they will manage the networking resources you need not to take care where is the data storage right all of this stuff when it is taken by the cloud provider then it is called as software as a service so i'll i'll show you there is a somebody has explained this model via pizza right i'll show you that that will make it even easier for you to understand okay let's see the next one which is a platform as a service okay so in this case uh you have you you need not to worry about hardware or software okay that uh, what is the software at the like what is the hardware at the back end whether it is having i core or uh, core se i7 or i9 or whatever uh, processor is there right you can focus on the application development i can give you the example for example i am hosting my two blogs 
one is that udzial.com and one is my other site gauravkhurana.in okay so ho it's hosted on hostgator and hostgator gives you a platform where i can control that okay wo, which database i want to use or which php version i want to use so i have control over those things right which is not in the case of software as a service but i don't see that whether uh, those are installed in a linux server or maybe a windows or how they are managing all of that stuff so that example is called as platform as a service so i can access their platform i can install maybe certain softwares and i can control some part of it right so that system is called as uh, platform as a service right and now let's see infrastructure as a service so infrastructure you get the like you don't even get the hardware in this case but you can control some other or whatever so all the softwares that are installed in that system and you are responsible for updating it right so for example in this case let's say the operating system was windows so all the security patches and all that stuff right or upgrade to the latest version in this case cloud provider will take care in this case they will not uh, take care of that right and some of these things might vary with uh, based on the cloud provider but most of it is you are controlling most of it okay so tenant will manage the operating system network configuration like i told you here based on what responsibility who is doing it will come under these category pass saas or ias right which cloud service models so these are the various uh, cloud service model uh, that we have read and other one which i was telling you was data as a service okay where uh, people are using just the data part right they are not responsible for any of this and let's say you want to just create a single function let's say some age calculator or loan calculator right so then you need not to create a full application right azure gives you a facility where you just go and uh, implement that particular function on their infra and it will be available as a service right so i would say that that, that it's a sub part of this right but since uh, it, it's an independent thing so they have given a different name that that's a facility right you need not to maybe uh, take care of full things over here right so that is called as function as a service okay so this is a, also a term which got again popularized with the cloud called as serverless uh, computing right so in this what happens is like again you need not to manage infra infra in most of the cases you need not to manage cloud provider takes care of it right and there are still server right don't uh, because it's serverless it's like uh, so for cloud people say that it's someone else computer right that right? you are not owning that computer but again things are running on a computer right so this is a misconception that there is no server at all so server is there it's just that you are not managing it you are not creating that server server is already provided to you right and uh, it's still running the code so cloud provider takes care of these things right so all these things are not visible to developer so cloud provider takes care of these things right you can add the scaling we'll come to this what is scaling right and these are highly scalable and event driven so these are the advantages that we get by using serverless uh, computing right which is provided by cloud okay now why someone would use cloud we have already read so many advantages let let's learns about other advantages so they provide high availability okay so what that means is in many of the services as your promises that it would be 99.99 okay what does that mean that there is a service level agreement okay that if it comes beyond this let's say uh, in a year for more than 5 days or in total right considering everything or even for one day so this is counted based on service if it is down then azure will return you let's say 25% of your amount okay whatever you are paying or things like that right it's just an example and other cloud providers also do that because think from the business perspective right so let's say amazon if it is down for 4 minutes they would have a loss of crores right so that uh, that would come for cloud provider right because they are hosting their app on cloud so cloud availability should be very high right so uh, the the cloud provider such as azure aws google gcp right so all they take care that their system should be highly available right sometimes once in a year you might see that okay there is some outage and all then they get a lot of loss okay 
Now comes the scalability, which we just read in the previous topic, and it's a very important interview question as well. That okay, the people ask that what is the difference between horizontal and vertical? Okay, so horizontal is like let's say you have a server which is core, like uh, let's say core to duo. Okay, so if more servers are getting added to manage your system, okay, like horizontal like this, then it is called as horizontal. scalability right that there are certain other cores or other hard disk or other things which are similar to the one which is deployed and you can add that right so that is called as horizontal scalability vertical means this core to i duo can like can be replaced by core i7 okay or core i9 so when you increase the capacity like this or let's say you have 200 mb of space and it can be increased to 200 gb right so in this case the same thing is getting added like so the capacity is increasing like this in a vertical way okay that that's why it is called as vertical scaling and this one is called as horizontal scaling both have their own advantages and are uh, used at various places okay now comes the very important concept of el elasticity and auto scaling okay so what happens is let's say uh, somebody has attacked on your site okay and what happen is there are so many uh, people like Uh, like generally the visit is less but one day the visit become too much okay so that they want to bring your uh, site down okay but if you have this auto scaling on okay uh, i think these attacks would definitely be blocked by i'm just giving an examples but let's say that some maybe genuine people are visiting your site on a particular day uh, too many times okay so if the auto scaling is on your system can increase based on the demand and you can put alert as well right so people a thought might come to your mind that what if i will be bill a lot right so you can put a maximum limit that auto scaling is up to this limit right so and you can get an alert also if something like this is happening so this is to take care of that right and there is agility right like whenever you want to deploy a new resource you need not to wait uh, wait that i have to buy that resource and do something right and this is the major advantage that they have data centers around the globe okay so you can select the generally when you deploy a resource it will ask you a region okay that we'll see in the next video that so that region is like whatever the place is near to you you can select that region okay so that uh, the service can be provided you in a little faster way and they have data center and disaster recovery is also an important point let's say like these days we see wars in various countries right so what happened is that like maybe your like if that place is attacked right so these data providers or these azure people they take care of data replication or all the clouds right and they have geo distribution that means same data is available in various parts of the world so that if there is a problem in one place the other can take care of this if you do this manually or for you like it would be very costly to maintain that full network and these incidents happen let's say once in a lifetime but you'll have to maintain it throughout so these people are taking care of that so this is a concept of uh, renting on a very high level if you understand but uh, since it's a software there are so many things to be taken care of that so cloud has uh, provide this all of the advantages okay let's conclude what we have studied most of it right so you need not to guess the capacity right whatever you need you can do it on experiment basis maybe take 100 gb and then increase if you want decrease if you want right you can go global in a minute you can launch in various places and with the, you need not to worry about okay uh, that i have to have the latest hardware and all you can just go global in a minute right easily you can set up and uh, you have saving because you pay as you go instead of having the capital expense right so you open a startup and it's ready because all of the hardware stuff is taken care you just have to take care of the software that you are developing uh, so hope you liked it whatever basics i tried to explain and let me show you that uh, pizza one which i was telling you so you can type on google that uh, pizza as a service okay there you will see this that uh, what is software as a service where you don't own the dining dining table and soda like you go to a restaurant and you get every of thing so that is called as software as a service you as a customer use it right platform as a service they have told that okay dining table and 
soda is uh, provided by the uh, let's say that it's somebody else is maintaining the restaurant and somebody else is running their brand so they get this dining table and sofa and they can maybe uh, soda sorry so they can put some things on the dining table if they want to so that uh, liberty they have when they are asking for platform as a service somebody is using infrastructure as a service then they get all these facility like fire oven electric gas so they have more control right so as soon as you move this way you get more control over things if you have everything on your home it's as good as uh, uh, running at home right so that is called as on premises so hope you like the video and you can subscribe to my channel in the next video we will learn about machine learning and we'll learn an algorithm in machine learning before that i have one video where i'll tell you how to you can create an azure account and get 16000 rupees from azure for using their resources right not for your personal use thank you for watching